In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace your lower control arm on your Ford Taurus. It's located behind your front wheel. Using a 19 millimeter socket, we'll take off our lug nuts. Make sure you keep a hand on it for that last one. All right, we're going to use a 29 millimeter socket. And we're going to undo our axle nut. All right, so now to take off this washer, I'm going to use a magnet, easiest way. Right, so you're going to use some wire cutters. Undo your cutter pin. You might use a pick. Shake it around if your car's rusty like this. Rust typically doesn't like the shakes. I'm not cutting it off, I'm just pulling it out with these. All right, so now we're gonna use a 17 millimeter socket to take off our castle nut. Okay, so now you wanna whack it right here. Just don't hit your fingers on that, that would hurt. I have my nut on the bottom of the tie rod so I can Go like that if needed. Okay, so that's free, so we're gonna take our nut off. And pull it out. Using a 21 millimeter socket and my air gun, I'm gonna take this bottom nut off the ball joint. So I'm using this tool to separate the lower control arm from the ball joint. So we're going to put a ratchet strap or something like it around the rotor here and hang on the spring. And the goal is to lift up the knuckle enough to get the control arm out. All right, now that we have our ratchet strap holding up the knuckle by the studs, I'm going to pry down on this pry bar and push this away and get that ball joint out, which is what I've done. So I'm going to take this nut off with a 21 millimeter socket. I'm going to hold the bolt head still with a 3 8 ratchet, a swivel, and an 18 millimeter short socket. All right, so I put my nut back on because my bolt is stuck in there. So I'm going to use a piece of wood so I don't mush them down that nut in a sledgehammer. And I'm going to free it up like that. Now I'm going to take the nut off again. I'm going to put this nut off to the side somewhere. All right, now that I got that nut off, tap the rest of the bolt out. All right, so now we're going to do the other side of the lower control arm. I'm going to use a 21 millimeter wrench on the nut side and a 3 8 ratchet with a 18 millimeter socket on the other side. And I'm using a pole on my ratchet just to give me a little bit more muscle. Just make sure you hold your wrench. Right, I'm gonna swap out a short socket now. All right, so before I get myself stuck in there, I'm gonna take off my wrench. that off. And now we can take the nut off the other end. And you're going to pull that through with a tool. I'm going to wiggle this to get the bolt out. Taking a bolt out. I'm going to put my nut with my bolt so I don't lose it. All right, so I'm going to tap the bolt out all the way. There we go. Make sure your, your knuckle is supported before you take your axle out. Your tie rod's disconnected. Your control arm's disconnected. You're ready to go. So I'm going to pull this out, take my axle out, and then I'm going to be able to get my control arm out. You might need a pry bar between the axle and the knuckle just to get that last bit out and just steer it out of the way. So we're going to be removing the sway bar link 
on both sides so that we can move this bar up and out of the way in order to get this control arm out. Our sway bar link is stuck from rust, so we've got to heat it up and remove the nut. All right, so I'm gonna use an 18 millimeter ratchet wrench. Hopefully you didn't have to heat up your sway bar link, but if you did, now you can detach that and get your other one on the other side. Flip it up this way and then pull it out. So here we are, we're gonna put our new control arm in. I'm gonna start by putting it in the same way I took it out, which is like, I'm gonna put it in like this after I slide it into the frame. And then you're gonna flip it up. I am gonna strap it up because it just takes the weight off and it makes it easier to maneuver. So I'm gonna put that through the hole here in case I lose my grip. I'm gonna slide it down. get it past the sway bar and up and over and now you're going to start turning it upward like this as you're sliding it in it looks like it's hung up on that lip there get your pry bar on the other side of that sway bar link bar if yours is not moving like ours and get it above the control arm. All right, so now we can take our bungee cord out before we get involved with anything else because we're very close to getting it in place. You could pull away your strut and your axle. I'm gonna pull this away like this. Once you get that out from under, push this in a little bit more and get it between that bracket. I'm gonna use my rubber mallet. See if I can knock it down. There's probably some rust down there on the frame stopping the control arm. So I have a piece of wood up here holding this away so I have room to wiggle. I'm going to use a pry bar to try to get this other part of the control arm in the bracket. I just have to get a rubber mallet, give it a little extra love. So now I'm going to feed my bolt through my bolt and nut on this side. That head goes towards the back of the car. And the nut goes towards the end. If you wiggle the control arm up and down, it's easier to get through. Just get it started. All right, so now at this point, we're going to try to get the axle in the knuckle. You want to turn Make sure it's lined up. Don't just jam it in there. Okay, once you have that in, you're gonna wanna put your nut on so it doesn't fall out again. But don't tighten it. Now you can pull this out so you have a little play. I'm gonna pry down the control arm. I have a big pry bar and I'm using my leg, believe it or not, to hold that down while I steer my knuckle into where it belongs. Turn my ball joint out just to have my have it make it easier. Stand on that pry bar. You can also have a friend help you if needed. And push that knuckle in. So now we're gonna take a look, see where we're at. Make sure the axle's still where it needs to be. Looks good. Put your sway bar on the proper side. And just check your work. Make sure everything's lined up so nothing falls out. Now you can put your ball joint nut on. So now you have all your nuts started and we can take our ratchet strap off. So let's tighten up this ball joint nut to 59 foot pounds. So once you get your nut tight to 59 foot pounds, you're gonna see if your cotter pin fits through. If it doesn't, you can tighten it until it does. 
till it lines up. Don't ever loosen it. So I'm gonna tighten mine up a tiny bit more to line up my hole better. That looks good. I'm gonna feed your cotta pin through and pull that pot down. And then the other one can go around. You can use your fingers to start and then lock it down with some needle nose pliers. Usually tap it up a little bit and then I cut the excess off with some wire cutters. There we go. You're gonna put your bolt through. Your head goes on the top and start the knot underneath. I'm using a 21 millimeter socket for the lower nut and an 18 to hold it still on the top. So I'm using a 21 millimeter wrench on my nut side, because that's all you can fit in there, and an 18 millimeter socket on the head side. I'm gonna snug this up. Okay, be sure to have your vehicle raised at ride height. The control arm is at ride height before torquing down the bolts. The front nut is going to be torqued to 98 foot-pounds. Okay, for the back control arm, bolt and nut, you're gonna torque it to 85 foot-pounds. After you've torqued the control arm, you can lower the control arm down. All right, so now we're gonna install our sway bar link. Now you can get your nut started. I'm gonna use an 18 millimeter ratchet wrench for my nut and a five millimeter Allen head for the inside of the bolt. And we're gonna tighten down our sway bar link end on this side. All right, so now you can torque this to 59 foot-pounds. All right, so now we're gonna place our tie rod back in the knuckle, just line up the stud to go through. And then we're gonna put our castle nut on. We're gonna snug this up a little bit with our gun, and then we're gonna torque it. Okay, so zip this on a little bit. And once you get it snugged, we're gonna torque it to 41 foot-pounds. And you're gonna look for your hole for your cutter pin. If it's lined up, great. If it's not, turn it towards tightening. You don't wanna loosen it, find the hole. You wanna tighten it. All right, so now we're gonna stick our cutter pin through. Mine's nice and lined up. And you wanna pull this one up and over the stud, and then this one to the side. Just get rid of those ends. You can either hammer them down push them down, or you can cut them off if it's too long, which I'm gonna do here. And that will keep that nut from falling off. We're gonna undo our axle nut. I'm gonna put my lug nut on to hold it in place. All right, we are gonna put our washer and nut on. All right, so now we're gonna put our axle nut on, tighten it up and torque it. To do that, you're gonna use a pry bar and put it between two lug nuts so that it doesn't turn when you're trying to turn the axle nut. You're not gonna wanna use an air gun or an electric gun to tighten your axle nut. Do it by hand. All right, so we're gonna torque this to 184 foot-pounds. All right, so now we can take our lug nut off and put our wheel on. Make sure you put them on hand tight first and you're gonna tighten them in a star-like pattern using a 19 millimeter socket. I usually do the bottom one first and walk the wheel on.
snug them up, and then we're going to be torquing them. Using a 19 millimeter socket, we're going to torque our wheels to 95 foot pounds. We're going to do it in a star like pattern. I'm going to check it one more time, go all the way around. And we're good. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.